Okay, pull your britches up tight. Just <laughs> FYI. I was, I was, by the way, at the other end of the table the other uh, yesterday morning when she called you to set this up and said, Chris, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get your panties in a bunch. <laughs> Just between you and me, I fully understand the uncomfortable silence, my friend. <laughs> Chris, here's where I was. The Shuttered Venue Grant Program the federal government had, they gave $107 million to Louisiana entities, some bars, some nightclubs, some festivals, some um, event venues, etc. I counted only six, I believe, total in Shreveport, and I, and I got to thinking really awful of you. I thought... Well, where's the where's the Hirsch Coliseum? Where's the state fair? Why why aren't they on the list? Did they not know about this and go after the money? What is wrong with you, Chris G? Well, absolutely, we knew about it, and what a what a uh, glorious opportunity it was going to be for all of us shuttered venue operators and promoters and arenas and so forth and so on. But didn't quite pan out for State Fair of Louisiana so far did not quite pan out for Encompass Sports Management so far, who are the owners of the Shreveport Mudbugs, who also applied and were denied. So you uh, were denied. You got, a, you got an email saying you've been declined. We got, there's a portal where you upload all your application documents, and, you, of course, you, you check in with that portal uh, multiple times a day to see if you have an action item to fulfill, which we never had any action items, and, then uh, you, you check on your status daily, which our status was under review from the time we submitted our application until a few days ago when I logged in and saw that we had a decline message. Why? What was the, did you not have enough exposed breasts at the State Fair of Louisiana? Hey. What exactly was the deal? Well, you know, there were, I'll be quite honest, in the beginning when they put out the frequently asked questions, uh, which relate to the rules of the grant, uh, they mentioned that agricultural fairs are ineligible for the grant. That has since changed, and now it's they may or may not be eligible. But I can tell you that at least 20 other fairs around the country have already had their funds dispersed, including the McLennan County Fair, which is also a fair and rodeo in Waco, Texas, the Central Florida Fair, the Allegan County Fair in Michigan, uh, there's several other fairs. In fact, the fair up in Washington and the fair manager there wrote a toolkit to help us all prepare our applications. And uh, his application was de- declined as well. There's no rhyme or reason to why, and the SBA will not tell you why. All they can is that you not meet the requirements to be an eligible entity. Congressman Congressman that. Johnson told me that his his staffers are working with locals on the appeals process. Are you going to do that? Are you doing that? Yes, and I have also been uh, corresponding with Mike Johnson's office as well to let them know that we were declined, and they said that when we submit appeal, which we haven't had an opportunity to do so yet, to make sure we notify them so that they can work with us. And I certainly welcome that opportunity. So. But Clearly, in the rules, uh, businesses of lewd activities and such were not supposed to be eligible. But we do know that there's been more than one strip club establishment. See, that was going to be my next question, hearkening back to my little (laughs) booby reference moments ago. When you see that a couple of strip clubs in the Baton Rouge area, one of them getting getting a million dollar grant and and you being kicked to the curb to use... uh, uh, early 20th century, 21st century lexicon, you must feel awful. Awful. And, you know, we were definitely shuttered in 2020. We couldn't have our annual state fair. But we also bring in events throughout the year, whether it's an outdoor concert or festival and different ticketed shows in our agricultural building, as do the mud bugs. They bring in circuses and monster truck shows and a few concerts. It's not all ice hockey. And, uh, There's just no rhyme or reason to it. It's very disturbing. There's enough money in the SBOG program. They could have funded every single applicant, unless it was a false application, of course, and still had money left over. Chris, let me ask you this, because this is what I think about it, and I I may be wrong, and you can maybe talk me off the ledge. I feel like 
in this case, South Louisiana is this beautiful toy poodle inside with a nice fluffy bed and nice treats. And we're the mangy mutt outdoor in the mud getting, maybe they'll toss us a bone every now and then. And, and, and it's like, this happens over and over again. And this is just another example. Is that a part of this? It is. And you know, it's, most of, like you said, all the Louisiana money, with the exception of a handful in Shreveport, I saw none in Bossier, none in Monroe, I think one in Alexandria, uh, but multiple entities in New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Lake Charles, Lafayette, Jazz Festival got $10 million. Mm-hmm. I am very happy that we do have a few local organizations, such as the Rebel that got a little over 300000 and the symphony and the opera and the strand theater and the little theater on margaret place and a couple of others but uh it's just once again it's a it's a uh bureaucratic machine that does not seem to uh to treat all very very fairly are you in any way the slightest bit optimistic that that whatever appeals process there is will 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 turn out a little better for you I have to remain optimistic, but the, the tough thing is, is the SBA gives you no direction on why your application was declined or what part of your application was declined. So it's going to be a guessing game when we appeal to try to guess what we may have done wrong. But I don't think that we did anything wrong because a lot of these fair, other fairs that have been funded just basically submitted pretty much identical applications. So. Just a little uh, side, a little, little side note for you. Cajun Dome got almost eight million. I asked and inquired about the Brookshire Grocery Arena, and was told late yesterday that their submission is still pending. So I'm going to have major pib if the BGA doesn't get some of this because they they need to make I, some of this up. I feel pretty confident they will. You know, there's all kinds of little technicalities in this grant program, such as. Tickets on sale 60 days out, uh, permanent seating, which which uh, the permanent seating uh, rule, you know, they, they ended up throwing that rule out the window because they're funding festivals that don't have permanent seating. Mm, yeah. I guess you had to have stripping cows or something there, Chris, to make it work. Well, you know, you know uh, we could probably arrange for some unique things at the fair if that would help, but... <laughs> Uh, it, the opportunity was you could apply to up to 45 percent of your 2019 revenue, which would have been huge for us. It, our grant that we submitted was in the amount of one million six hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars, which would have been tremendous. And just so, to clarify, you didn't get a dime, did you? We got zero. And and, uh, you know, it, it's tough. It's, it's a tough pill to swallow. But, oh. you know, we'll, we'll move on and overcome as we always do. <laughs> No, I'm pissed. I want you to. I want you to win on appeal, and whatever I have to do, whoever I have to call, let me know. <laughs> yeah, that's what you want. Aaron McCarty running interference for you. <laughs> Chris Giordano, State Fair of Louisiana. <laughs> Chris Giordano, State Fair of Louisiana. Always a pleasure, my friend. Great talking to you, and uh, keep up the good and the hard work. Much appreciated.